and I am going to perform the experiment for you today based on the uh, solubility of calcium hydroxide. We are trying to find the KSP value, which is the ion product for calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide is considerably insoluble compound, but since it's insoluble, it would reach a level of saturation very soon. And we are going to be able to find out what is the solubility for calcium hydroxide using a titration method. Using titration, because calcium hydroxide is going to generate hydroxide ion, is uh, we are going to titrate that with the standard of hydrochloric acid. And the color change uh, is going to indicate how much acid is needed to, to neutralize the hydroxide ion. You are going to see on the introduction or this pre-lab discussions video uh, about the calculation and all the formulas, but I have to explain what we are doing here so you can follow me. So um, based on the equation, calcium hydroxide is going to give two hydroxide ion and one calcium ion. So we find the concentration of hydroxide ion, divide that by two, that gives concentration of calcium ion, and we have when we have calcium ion and hydroxide ion concentration, we can calculate the value for KSP. This is for part one of the experiment. For part two of the experiment, we are going to look at the effect of common ion effect. So we are uh, making our solution of calcium hydroxide in a calcium chloride solution. So we are adding calcium chloride. When you add calcium chloride based on the Chateau's principle, it's going to reverse the reaction. The ionization of calcium hydroxide is going to be reversed. So it's expected to have less hydroxide ion and lower value for KSP. Now, practice or the actual experiment now, we are using HCl in the burette. Since you've done a couple of the experiments already, you know how to condition the, the burette first, wash it with HCl and fill up to, to zero or desired number for initial burette reading, which in this case is actually zero. Uh, and you can record this number as the initial burette reading for the HC HCl. The indicator which I'm using is the bromothymol blue. And uh, this is going to be um, showing the, the blue color in a basic solution. And in acidic solution is going to be this yellow color. So what I expect when I have my calcium hydroxide solution in the flask is showing a um, blue color. So I add a couple drops. Of that, I'm, I have a nice blue color here for the basic solution. I just want to add that I use pipette, but since you already used pipette and you have the explanation, I will show you how to use it, but I used pipette to measure 25 milliliters of the calcium hydroxide solution. The calcium hydroxide solution that I'm using now is just the saturated calcium hydroxide solution with no calcium chloride in it. So I have the base and I have the active, the standard inside the burette. Let's go ahead and start the, uh, the titration. Okay, going to add drop by drop until I see a color change, which is the end point of the reaction. Just like other titrations, at the beginning, I can add probably faster, and then I get slow. I add slower. I'm just holding my hand this way so you can see the, the color change that is happening here. So we are expecting the blue color to disappear and a yellow color to, to appear. The first trial is always hard in titration because you don't know approximate value or how much of the volume of the standard is going to be used. The second one is easier. So I keep adding. I see the yellow color appears in the center and it disappears quickly. 
So I'm going to add until I see the color change is permanent. Okay, a yellow color appear. If it stays like this for 20 seconds, I have my number, my approximate number or exact number if it stays 20 seconds, which I'm going to read it from the burette. And it's very hard for you to read it. And I will uh, try to, to zoom it. And hopefully you can see that number. Okay. So that is the, the value, then the number for final buret reading. Record your number for final buret reading. And this is for the first trial of the titration for calcium hydroxide, saturated calcium hydroxide. Record your number. The initial buret reading was 0 0.00. And this is the final buret reading. Okay. I like to always do two trial of the experiment and take average. So I would refill the burette with the HCL, the same solution. This time, actually, I'm going to start from different number. I'm going to start from 10. We're starting from 10, and if I add about the same amount of the acid to neutralize the, the base that I have, according to the first try, I can go fast by adding 20 milliliters. I'm starting from 10.00, 10.00. I can add about 20 milliliters, and then I will slow down. Now I'm going to slow down. So I don't want to miss the end point of reaction. Just adding one drop at a time now for the color change. Perfect. Now you have the end point of the reaction. End point of the reaction with the white background. If you can see it, perfect. Record the number. This is the final reading for second trial of titration of saturated calcium hydroxide. Initial reading was 10.00 and you have the final reading. Since the two numbers are uh, close to one another, I don't have to repeat the third try. If they were far from each other, I would have repeat the third try, but I have the two tries for this experiment. We are done with the part one of the experiment. I'm getting ready for the second part of the experiment. Okay, I just reviewed the video and I noticed that uh, the burette, even though I brought it close up, it was hard to read the fine lines. So you couldn't read the, the hundredth place. I'm gonna have to give the numbers to you because it's just not easy to read the numbers. Um, one, the initial reading for trial one was 0, 0.00 and the final reading was 27.40. So I went from 0, 0.00 to 27.40. For the second trial, we started from 10.00 and we went down to 37.30. So those are your numbers because it wasn't clear I want to give that number. One explanation, the lab manual asked for filtering the solutions. So since the solution was filtered already and it did look clear and there was no residue, I did not show that step also. So this is a pre-filtered 
solution that I use for calcium chloride. Because if you have settlements of the precipitation of the calcium hydroxide, I'm sorry, the calcium hydroxide, as you add acid, when you titrate the, the hydroxide that's in the solution, then the concentration goes down, then based on the Schottler's principle, you get more of the hydroxide being produced if we have solid calcium hydroxide. So it must be filtered if it's cloudy or if you see the settlements. I just want to explain that um, that's the, the solutions were filtered also. Now, we are doing the second part of the experiment, the starting second part of the experiment. I have refilled the burette to 0, 0.00 again. So we have the initial reading. This is for part two, part B of the experiment. That's the calcium chloride dissolved in calcium, calcium hydroxide dissolved in calcium chloride solution which is the common ion effect. That's what we are studying now. So I have the solution base and the acid in the burette. Uh, Bromo uh, phenol blue, same indicator is used for the titration. I expect is the first time that we are doing the experiment, but I do expect that this time I'm going to use less than 27 milliliter because of the common ion effect, but we cannot uh, just go with the theory, we have to practice and actually find out how much is used. So I'm going to have to be careful with the first trial and add slowly. We are adding until the end point of the reaction, which is the color change from blue color to yellow color. Add drop by drop at this point until the color change is permanent. Okay, end point of the reaction. Now we are going to record this number. Hopefully you can see it because it's exactly on the line. And for this one is at 22.00 based on my view. And you can record this as the end um, point or the final volume or final burette reading for trial one of part B. So we are repeating the trial because we have to do at least two trials for the for titration. So I'm going to start with uh, refilling the burette with HCl. And this time I'm going to start again with 10 milliliters. So let me adjust to that 10. So you don't get used to just starting from zero all the time. It doesn't have to be zero. But what we have to be careful, we want to make sure that if the first one like use 22, I have at least 22 milliliters of the HCl in the, in the burette before I start. Otherwise it will go past the 50 and there is no graduation. I don't have enough acid, it will not work. I'm starting with 10.00 for the burette reading. This is the initial burette reading, trial two of the uh, part B of the experiment. I can add fast, about going to add about 20 fast and then slow down. And after the 20, I'm going to add one drop at the time or slowly one drop at the time until I get to the um, color change. Okay. Okay, so last drops we add slowly, and as soon as the color change is constant uh, for um, 20 seconds, then we can stop. We read the burette reading again. And this time we have 31.70, 31.70. 
31.70, and that would be the final BRET reading for trial two of part B of the experiment. So based on the common ion effect, when we added calcium chloride to the calcium hydroxide, the solubility of calcium hydroxide was lowered slightly. It's not a huge difference, but the concentration of calcium chloride that we also used was not very high. If you use higher concentration of calcium chloride, this number might be uh, more you know, significantly um, different. But the idea and the theory that common iron is affecting the solubility and it will reduce the solubility, it's kind of observed based on the uh, result of this experiment. And um, thank you. Thank you.